Thanks so much because you know, all the speeches were so easy, interesting and significant because you know, I also, <coughs> sorry, uh, this evening I also learned, you see, the significance of linkage of the struggle, you see, in Ferguson, from Ferguson to my country's people's career, uh, sorry. And uh, I would like to avail this opportunity <coughs> to present uh, the viewpoints or perspectives uh, of, you see, uh, my country, how we see the present reality of the world and how as a diplomat, you know, we, uh, I see the uh, daily life in London, you know, what is so different from my country and UK, you know. The first thing would like, I would like to tell you that I found out from my first arrival of my London, I found out that there have been so much ideological work done by the ruling class of, you see, the British society to brainwash the ordinary people of this country. Because, you know, on my first day of arrival in the morning, I, we, or the whole, my family got up, you see, and early, and then we switched on the TV, and the first thing I saw is that the young children and women are dying in Gaza area. You see, there are a lot of, you see, the cops of young children and women, the blas in the Iraq, you know, the, the streets. And the first response from my children is that they cannot go on breakfast because they felt vomiting when they saw the blood on the TVs, you see. But when I, in the afternoon, when I get into the streets and went into the bars, the restaurants, hospitals, or railway stations, all the TV screens there, were broadcasting the same story of young children, ladies were killed, the, there were blood in every street, but people even, even don't care about it. There was no any interactive, right. you see, among the people of those huge massacre done in the other parts of the world. When there is a football match, people you can, oh, <laughs> when there is a celebrity, people watch it, but oh, when they great. saw Hundreds of people are dying or killed or massacred when they see the blood, you see, of the human beings in the TV screens. They even, you see, do not communicate with it. Why? Because the Bruja mass media made every individual people blind and vulnerable. So when you ask the people why you are not so, in, you're interacting with those happenings in the world, they may answer you that, what can I do for that? Mm -hmm. See, there's no, nothing I can do it. That's why the people are so much used to all those massacres going in the other parts of the world. This is really the tragedy, because the people of this country should care about the destinies, about misfortunes of the other people in other parts of the world. But people are so much used to it because of those huge mass media, you know, the propaganda by, you see, imperialists. Hmm. Another thing is to which I came across is this. My son is in Acton High School, <laughs> which is the, uh, uh, is it Western part of Ealing? Yes. yes. And most of his students are from India and Indian origin and African origin. There are very few English, you know, the boys and girls. But my son was surprised because, you know, he's very much interested in history. You see, that's why mm -hmm. every history lessons, you see, there was huge discussions about history. And he found out that the children from African origin or Indian origin even didn't know about the core elements of Indian revolution, how Indian people got independence. It is not the present by, given by the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> the independence was won by the Indian people led by Gandhi. There was a huge, you know, oppressions by <coughs> British Empire not give the independence. The textbook didn't tell the African boys and girls how the people in Africa got their independence. The independence of Africa were only achieved by armed struggle when the people in Africa took their arms and challenged the, you see, colonization. Then, you see, there was no choice but, you see, they gave the independence. But 
what are taught in schools. It is, it is taught at, as if, you know, the independence, freedom was given as a present by the imperialists. It is totally nonsense. When my son, you know, took part in the lesson of, uh, lessons of Second World War, there were a huge part of the lessons were allocated about the, those uh, purges in Soviet Union, you know, by Stalin or whatever. They didn't tell how Soviet people led by Stalin crushed the Nazism, mm. Germans, and they made the you see, major role to put the end of Nazism. They didn't say it. So I think I found out that there was a huge, very long, you know, several decades of brainwashing, you see, done by ruling class of this society so that the people are blind, the people felt vulnerable, they do not know that there is an alternative to their lives, they accept the reality as it is. That is the reason why the ruling class of this country, imperialists, so hate, you see, DPRK. If the people in this country or in America knew or knows that, know that there is a country in the world where there is a free education, free housing, free medical care, then people may think, they, they may have second thoughts, why not we, you know? <laughs> So in order to deny the alternative to ordinary people of this society, they hate the different society, different system of my country. That is the reason why the mass media creates all those shocking, you see, terrifying stories about my country. I tell you one, you see, very specific example. Last year in July, my country celebrated the 60th anniversary of Korean War. And Comrade Dermot Herderson here, you see, he personally visited my country, you see. And at that time, we invited, you see, the journalists like Channel 4 News, Sky News, of all big medias to my country. And they went. And I followed, you see, because their, their coverage was on Channel 4 and Sky News 24 hours. And I followed how they broadcast, you see, on the sports. They totally distorted, for instance, you know, on the exact day of 27th of July, when there was a big ceremony, state ceremony, and it is normal that in any country the state ceremony where there is all leaders are coming, there is a security check, you know. For instance, if a queen invites, you know, the, the diplomatic, you say, diplomats to Buckingham Palace, as a diplomat, we have to stand a long queue, you know, <laughs> before several hours, we are not allowed to take our mobiles, and there is a thorough search you see, for everyone entering Pakima Palace. It is a common thing worldwide you know, if there is uh, state functions. But the journalist was sent here. They captured, screened all those checkpoints, and they broadcast to the, uh, the British media here that the Pyongyang is full of checkpoints. Even the people in that city are not allowed to move freely. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why? Why they do this? Because if they, I don't blame, you know, those reporters on that event, because if they broadcast as it is, the editors, you know, of these TV stations or newspapers will not, you see, allowed to be broadcast in the newspapers, you know, or TVs, you know, that's why there is no choice for, you see, reporters, you know, or journalists. The more horrifying, the more shocking stories they create, you see, will be, more read will be more viewed by British public. That is the reason why, you know, uh, I uh, first saw Marcia's, you know, the, these uh, stories on the internet right after your visit to my country. B before that, I even didn't, you know, uh, met, you see, Marcia, and we even didn't meet each other. And he wrote, uh, is that uh, 13 things you discovered, you see, about my country? This is said about haircuts or whatever. They just create all these shocking stories. For instance, you know, the uncle of the leader was fed by the dog of all these things. <laughs> they create these shocking stories. Of course, you know, any revolution in the world, in the, when there is opposition inside of the revolution, there should be, you see, 
a process of removing all these factionals. It is normal thing. So as our as a Korean revolution, it is the same. If you see there is you see the factionals, it is natural to move them, you see, from our leadership. But when this story is broadcasted, you see, by the ruling class of this society, of the imperialists, they make this issue as a right kind of you know, human rights violations of whatever. While they are silent of killing hundreds of people every day by their plans, with their, you know, in weapons. Who created the IS? Who created Al-Qaeda? Who made the present Arab world chaos? It is America. Yes, yeah. Why? Why they made this, the, the Middle East, you see, it's a kind of, you know, anarchy, is the system. Because if you think, if the whole Arab people are united, like Korea, around strong leadership, what would happen in Arab country with that strong, huge oil money? The whole Middle East, mm. you see, will be built on like a paradise, you know. The people in the Middle East should be the richest people of the world. They must be the happiest of the people and nation of the world. But what is going on there? They are the most miserable people these days. Because America made all those, you know, chaos in order to continue you see, exploiting the cheap oil there. They moved all the strong leaders in the Middle East. So now the people in the Middle East now, they don't have, have, have even leaders. But if you go back, you see, our past history, what happened in our history? The revolution and the independence of people can only ensure when there is a strong leadership. Any revolution, Chinese revolution, Vietnam revolution, Korean revolution, even the revolution, independence revolution in Africa, Algeria, you know, all those revolutions went on with the strong leadership. So the present, you see, imperialists are focusing on removing all, you see, the strong leaders one by one, so that they want to eliminate the column where the people can unite around and make the li cut the links between all the people and make everyone individual so that people cannot unite to challenge and fight against imperialism. That is the reason. That's, that is the reason. That, that's the reason they create one day IS and then they pretend to, you see, remove it and next day they create another <laughs> terrorist group and then so that they creates this kind of chaos one by one, continuously. What happened in the Middle East? When, you know, Iraq, the, the former, you know, the, the Iraqi government, when they, they of, of course, they found out that they, that is the only way to, the, the, the only way to protect their country is to equip themselves with the same level as Israel's. You know, Israel's have hundreds of nuclear weapons. That's why Iraq decided to do the same. But what happened? The next day, Israel bombed Iraq, you know, autumn, you see, the plant. What happened in Syria? Israel bombed and get rid of those developments. What happened in Libya? When Gaddafi decided to do that, Americans and British intelligence said, no, that is not the right way. If you give up your nuclear development, we will invest you billions of dollars you see, in your country and we'll make one of the best country you see in the world, Libya. So Gaddafi believed it and he said, okay, I will remove all my nuclear facilities. But what happened? When Gaddafi finished its, all this development program, they <laughs> decided to bomb and kill Gaddafi even without a trial. That is the reason why the present, you know, the in the world imperialism, hate by U.S. is imperialist, hate so much the Korean revolution, the Korean leadership, you see, and the Korean position of nuclear weapons. As a diplomat, from time to time, I came across a very simple question from ordinary, honest British people. They may ask him, why North Korea developing nuclear weapons? You are a poor country. You have to use your money to take care of your ordinary people instead of using 
You see your resources to develop unnecessary nuclear weapons. <laughs> <laughs> then I, uh, I, I ask, you said North Korea is a poor country. Do you know there is no any homeless people in my country? We ensure free medical care system. We ensure free compulsory education system. We ensure free housing. Everyone in my country have jobs. And they say, is that true? Yes. How can you say that we are a poor country? We are not. You know? <laughs> then I, uh, next I ask them, you said that why we are, taking, we are developing you see, nuclear weapons? Unless we have nuclear weapons, how can we protect you see, our ordinary lives? We don't want the blood in the streets, like in other countries, Afghanistan, you know, or in Pakistan, you know. We want to protect our people, our system, and our sovereignty. And unless we are equipped ourselves, we can't do it. If you see the America, who has got the most developed weapon system? It is the America. American army can target any part of the world at their will. You see, all the American army is computerized, satellite system, GPS, <coughs> guided missile, they have everything. So unless we equip ourselves, you see, they cannot take us any moment. What's going on you know, in Korea? Every year, every month, America together with South Korean forces wage huge nuclear war exercise. Last week, the former U.S. Defense Secretary Panetta, he published his memoir. And in his memoir, he disclosed that American government ordered American general in South Korea to use nuclear weapons if something happens. And as soon as this book was published, Newsweek attacked Panetta because Panetta justified DPRK's argument of developing its <laughs> nuclear weapons. <laughs> So America never hesitated to use its nuclear weapons, to use its weapons, you know, to attack anyone in the world. They never hesitated. And why? These days, Americans now learned that they cannot break down the socialist system in my country by military force. They found out. Because now we have nuclear weapons, now we have a strong army, when the people are firmly united, you know, they find out that military means cannot you see, reach their aim. So now they are changing their tactics from military you see, blackmail to human rights issues. Because when they say about nuclear weapons of all these things, it cannot be easily delegated. You see, to the people, ordinary people, because they, because me when the Americans say nuclear weapons or whatever, they think you also have nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. America cannot, you see, continue your policy like you can't do as I do, <laughs> you know. But when they say about human rights, violation of human rights of the people, ordinary people can listen. Is what's going on? You see, like that. So. Nowadays, Americans, instead of nuclear issues, they are now making the issues of human rights violations in DPRK. Next month, from the America and also European Union, you see, in, and Japan, those world, you know, imperialists, wants to adopt, want to adopt the UN resolution on human rights against DPRK. And one of the elements of that resolution is to refer DPRK leadership to the International Criminal Court. <coughs> they are going to do that. Why? Because they want to tell the world that anyone who challenge or oppose American way will be put on International Criminal Court. So don't do that. If America wants to do, you should never deny it. They won't make a precedent by using, you see, DPRK. That's why my country is strongly, you see, opposed. You see, those recent human rights campaign led by America. We will continue our alternatives 
and we will continue to develop our detente forces to fight against this America so that the other part of the world, the other, you see, progressive people of the world can learn and can, you see, from, you see, lessons that what is the right way to fight against the imperialism and what is the way for the people like UK, you see, can continue to fight for the improvement of your ordinary life here. Thank you. Wow.